Good morning. Um, welcome to today's um, Public Facilities Commission meeting. I'm Captain Craven, the Chairman of the Commission, and Lyra Mamoli. Commissioner. Commissioner. Um, so we're here today to start off with the Department of, uh, actually the Public Facilities Commission Department, right? That's correct. The update. Yes. Good morning, Commissioners. This morning we are going to begin with the Public Facilities Department. Before the commissioners, we have meeting minutes. The meeting minutes are from the last time that we met on February 17th, 2017. These meeting minutes concern the Department of Neighborhood Development. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Beginning this morning with the Public Facilities Department, the first vote is with Wayne McKenzie, who's a project manager. This concerns a contract to CGKV Architects, Inc. to provide architectural design and construction administration services for the roof and siding replacement at Area E5 Police Station. This is a project in West Roxbury. The contract price is $112,082. Wayne? Good morning, Commissioners. This is a design contract for CGKV Architects, Inc for building envelope work located at Area E5 Police Station in West Roxbury, on Center Street in West Roxbury. The scope of design services is for all architectural and design services for building envelope work through construction administration. The project scope uh, is associated with uh, roof and siding replacement as well as uh, gutters and perimeter sealants. As for the design contract uh, request for qualifications process, in an effort to reach a diverse group of qualified applicants including Minority, and minority business enterprises and women business enterprises. This project was publicly advertised and appeared in the city record in the Boston Globe on September 12, 2016. It also appeared in the state central register on September 14 of 2016. Additionally, the RFQs were submitted to the uh, small business enterprise office as well. All projects are publicly advertised and our goal is to spread the work out to as many diverse and qualified firms as possible. The idea is not to continually award contracts to the same design firms. In response to the request for qualifications, six firms submitted statements of qualifications. The uh, Designer Selection Committee consisted of representatives of the Public Facilities and the Boston Police Department. As for required experience, all applicants must show experience in projects in urban setting as well as uh, have experience with uh, roof replacement and building envelope work in public buildings. The evaluation process consisted of uh, the design and selection committee meeting in November of 2016. The proposals were reviewed and discussed among the design and selection committee members. Each member evaluated and rated a statement of qualifications based on the required experience stated in the RFQ. Out of the six design firms who submitted proposals, CGKV Architects Inc. rated the highest based on their relative experience. The construction estimate, as previously stated, um, is for uh, $770,824. The architectural basic service fee is $77,082, which is a rate of 10%. Uh, this design fee is consistent with the publicly advertised designer uh, selection, designer fees. Additional services portion of this contract is for 35,000, making this a total design contract of $112,082. The contract duration is for 64 weeks. This includes the design period as well as a 26 week construction period. The design firm CGKV Architects Inc. is MBE certified and three of their sub-consultants are also WBE certified. I request your consideration to vote to award this contract. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Um, Commissioner, any questions? Uh, no, actually, your presentation answered them on fee issues and so forth, so. Okay, I would move that we approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, thank you, Wayne. Thank you, vote number one is approved. Vote number two is also with Wayne McKenzie, project manager with the Public Facilities Department. This is a contract to Russo Bar Associates, Inc. This is to provide architectural design and construction administration services for the envelope repairs at four police stations. 
One police station is known as the Area A1. The location is downtown Boston. The second police station is B3, located in Mattapan. The third police station is D4, located in the South End. The fourth police station is D14, located in Brighton. The contract price is $280,244. Wayne, if you would present your vote. Thank you. Uh, stated, this design contract is for Russo Bar Associates for building envelope repairs at four Boston police stations. Um, as stated, it's uh, area A1, which is downtown Boston, area B3 on Blue Hill Avenue in Mattapan, area D4 on Harrison Avenue in the South End, and D14, which is uh, Washington Street in Wright. The scope of design services is for all architectural design services for building envelope work through construction administration at the four police stations. Uh, design services work will include window replacements, roof replacements, uh, ceiling replacement, and uh, masonry repairs. As uh, for the design contract request for qualifications, uh, in an effort to reach a diverse group of qualified applicants, including minority business enterprises and women business en enterprises, this project was publicly advertised in the city record and the Boston Globe on September 12 of 2016. Additionally, the RFQs were submitted to the small local business enterprise office, and uh, all projects are uh, publicly advertised, and our goal is always to spread the work out to as many diverse and qualified design firms as possible, and the idea is not to continually award projects to the same design firms. In response to the request for qualifications, seven firms submitted statements of qualifications. The designer selection committee consisted of representatives of the Public Facilities Department and the Boston Police Department. As for required experience, all applicants must show experience on projects in urban setting and have experience working with window replacement and building envelope work in public buildings. The Design and Selection Committee met in November of 2016. The proposals were reviewed and discussed among the Design and Selection Committee members. Each member evaluated and rated the statement of qualifications based on the required experience stated in the request for qualifications. Out of the seven design firms who submitted proposals, Russo uh, Bar Associates uh, Inc. rated the highest based on their required uh, experience. The construction cost estimate for this project is $2,043,754. The architectural basic service fee will be for $198,244, which is a rate of 9.7%. This design fee is consistent with our standard rates listed in our public facilities uh, design and selection handbook. The additional services portion of the contract is for $82,000, bringing the total design contract to $280,244. The contract duration for this project is 104 weeks. This includes the design period as well as a 52-week construction period. The design firm Russo Bar Associates Inc. does have a Boston office and they do have a great deal of experience working with the Public Facilities Department on building envelope work. Three of the design team's consultants are WBE certified, and one is MBE certified. I request your consideration to vote to award this contract. Thank you, Wayne. Any questions, Commissioner? Uh, more of a comment. Uh, these were listed as three separate uh, construction projects under the capital plan, so this designer is actually doing those three separate projects. The, uh, as called Area A1 Beef 1 Station, the B3 Roof Replacement, and the uh, Area D14 Station. You mean in the budget, Commissioner? The budget yeah. portion. So what you're doing is you're consolidating That's one right. consultant, which That's is right. efficient yes, and right. saves some money. You know, Fine, it's actually an excellent way of doing it. No, I just. Sorry. That's great. Yeah. Thank okay, you. I would move for approval of this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Ryan. You. Thank you. Vote number two is approved. Commissioners, is there a motion to adjourn the Public Facilities Department meeting? So moved. Second. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So the Public Facilities meeting has been adjourned. And now we are going to We are now transitioning into a new meeting. This would be with the Department of Neighborhood Development. I would kindly ask if Chief and Director Sheila Dillon would come forward along with presenter number one, which is Bernard Mayo. Welcome, Chief. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Chair Craven, if you would call this meeting to order. I would call the meeting of the um, Department of Neighborhood Development portion to order. Um, with us today, Bernard Mayo and Chief Sheila Dillon <coughs> present several votes. Angela? Thank you, Bernard. If you would put your name tag up. Thank you very much. That's oh. in your folder. Thank you. And thank you. We're just going over a few optics here. We're just increasing the size so we can have a better image of the handouts. <coughs> That's what we're seeing on the whiteboard that's there. Good morning, everyone. Vote number one is with Bernard Mayo. He's a project manager. He's with the Real Estate Management and Sales Division of the Department of Neighborhood Development. This vote concerns a conveyance to the Trust for Public Land. This is vacant land located at 11 through 15 and 19 through 21 Flint Street in Dorchester, Massachusetts. The purchase price for the property is $200. Bernard, if you would present your vote request. Good morning. I'm requesting PFC approval for the conveyance of 11-15 and 19-21 Flint Street to the, to the Trust for Public Land for use as an urban farm. This vote was a result of an extensive public process conducted by DND. We held a community meeting November 24th, 2014. We issued the RFP on July 27, 2015 with the due date of September 8th, 2015. The RP was advertised in the Central Register on July 29, 2015, and in the Boston Herald on July 27th and August 3rd of 2015. PFC approved the de developer designation of the Trust for Public Land on March 16th, 2016. The, the vote package includes a comprehensive memo which has all the pertinent background information. Mm -hmm. I've also included a few handouts. The first is a map of the site. And the second is a current photo <coughs> sideways. This is really interesting, Bernard, because it, um, didn't we just vote recently on the parcel across the street, which is the MBTA? Um, it's nearby, across Morton Street, right? There's, yes. there's another development going on there, so it seems like this whole area is getting a lot of really quality development coming from, correct. from your department, so that's a commendable thing. And this site is very close to the Clark Fowler Farm, which was an old historic farmhouse that Historic Boston has recently acquired. And so this, it's go this is going to be an active farm, but the Clark Fowler site is also going to be an area where we're training farmers and doing food education, et cetera. So the whole block is going to be a very exciting place to be. That's great, and there's a lot of neighborhood support for yes. this. Uh, if this vote is approved, it will result in the following public benefits, uh, reducing the amount of vacant, unutilized land, beautifying the neighborhood with green space, helping to improve air quality, reducing storm runoff and water pollution, providing fresh, healthy food for people in an underserved neighborhood, and also provide this food at a lower price than a local supermarket, and also makes use of compost, resources like compost, which would otherwise go to waste. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Chief. Any questions, Commissioner? Uh, no, again, I uh, always compliment getting these properties off of our, uh, off the cities and into other people's hands. Uh, only comment I might make is looking at your photo, you might want to work with the uh, Department of Public Works to maybe see if we can get that sidewalk fixed a little bit mm -hmm. and the handicap ramp brought up to standards. It's a very good point. <laughs> we will certainly work on that, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Um, I would move that this be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Bernard. You. Vote number one is approved. Vote number two is also with Bernard Mayo. Bernard, again, is a project manager with the Real Estate Management and Sales Division of the Department of Neighborhood Development. This is a conveyance to the Trust for Public Land. Vote number two concerns vacant land located at 131 Glenway Street in Dorchester, Massachusetts. The purchase price is $100. Bernard? Okay. I'm um, seeking pre PFC <coughs> approval for the conveyance of 131 Glenway Street to Trust for Public Land, also for use as an urban farm. Uh, this vote request was result of extensive public process conducted by DND. Community notification process was completed in March of 2015. The RFP was issued July 27, 2015, with a due date of September 8, 2015. The RP was advertised in the Central Register on July 29th, 2015, and in the Boston Herald on July 27th and August 3rd, 2015. Uh, the PFC approved the developer designation on March 16th, 2016. 
The uh, attached vote, pa vote, pa vote package includes a uh, comprehensive memo, which has all the pertinent background information. I also have a few handouts for this site. First is the map, and the second is the current photo. And if this vote is approved, it will result in the following public benefits. Beautification of the neighborhood with green space, helping to improve air quality, reducing the amount of vacant or unutilized land, providing fresh, healthy food for people in an underserved neighborhood, and also provides food at a lower price than the local supermarket, and making use of resources like compost, which would otherwise go to waste. Thank you, Bernard. Any questions, Commissioner? No. Um, I would move approval of vote number two. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Bernard. you. Vote number Thanks, two Bernard. is approved. Bernard, if you would pick up your documents along with your name tag. Thank you. We're now on to vote number three, and this is with James Smith. James Smith is a, a senior project manager with the Real Estate Management and Sales Division. This vote concerns a tentative developer designation and intent to sell to KCON Realty Trust. This is vacant land located at Tennant Street in Dorchester, Massachusetts. The purchase price is $71,150. If you would pr um, present your vote, please, James. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Department of Neighborhood Development to request a uh, tentative de developer designation of KCON Realty Trust uh, for an unaddressed parcel of land on Tinian Street in Dorchester, as outlined in the vote package. <coughs> we conducted a public process that uh, resulted in this vote request. Um, community notification letters were mailed to property owners in the vicinity of the site on November 30th, 2016, uh, notifying the public of DND's intent to offer the parcel for sale, as well as soliciting feedback. A request for proposals was issued on December 19th, 2016, with the due date of January 26, 2017. The RP was advertised in the State Central Register on December 21st, 2016, as well as the Boston Herald on December 19th and 26th. 2016. Two proposers applied for the RFP, one of whom was determined to meet the eligibility criteria. And based on our review of the eligible application against the evaluation criteria, we recommend the tentative de designation of KCON Realty Trust. The vote package contains a uh, comprehensive menu, a memo about the project and background and this request. And I have provided a few handouts to various plans and photos depicting the site. The first is a zoning map um, showing the site uh, within a commercial district. Second uh, is an assessor's parcel map. Third, an aerial photograph depicting the site in context with the surrounding area. And a site photo. In uh, summary, if uh, PFC approves this request, it will result in the following public benefits. Uh, visual and uh, functional improvements to the site as described in KCON Realty Trust proposal and outlined in the me memo. Uh, revenue to the city and the sale of uh, the parcel $71,150 as well as returning the property to the tax rolls with an estimated $1,800 per year in property tax revenue. If the Commission has any questions I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Thank you. Thank you James. I, I just want to commend you too for getting above the assessed value for the price and the return um, to the tax rolls. It's a great thing. It's an unusually shaped parcel. So, I'd like to further add that considering the parcel from the aerial photos being used already, that to actually get paid for it <laughs> <laughs> is a good thing. Very good. Any other com uh, questions, no. Commissioner? Um, I would no. move that we pass this. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, James. You. Thank you. So vote number three passes, and just a correction for the record that Jamie Smith is a senior environmental compliance manager with the Department of Neighborhood Development. Thank you. Vote number four <coughs> is with Jordan DC. She's a project manager in the real estate management and sales division of the Department of Neighborhood Development. This is a conveyance to the trustees of reservations. This concerns vacant land located at Widmere Road in Dorchester, Massachusetts. The purchase price is $100. Jordan? Good morning. 
I am here requesting a PFC approval for the conveyance to the trustees of reservations for the Windermere Road parcel outlined in the package. Um, D&D conducted an extensive public process that resulted in this vote request. Um, a community meeting was held on August 4th, 2015 to discuss this project. Um, and D&D has worked closely with the Jones Hill Neighborhood Association in follow-up meetings to get input on this project. A request for proposals was issued on April 16, 2016 and due on August 19, 2016. The RFP was advertised in the State Central Register on July 20, 2016 and in the Herald on July 18th and July 25th. Um, and also in the city record for the conveyance vote, conveyance vote on February 6, 2017. Uh, one development team applied and was determined to meet the eligibility criteria. And on January 19th, 2017, PFC approved the tentative developer designation of the trustees of reservations. Um, and the handouts provided are a site map and then um, a photo of the site as it is now. In summary, uh, if PFC approves this request, it will result in the creation of a 12 plot community garden, uh, community meeting and gathering, and a overall um, revitalized parcel of vacant land that has been vacant for 26 years in an otherwise active neighborhood. Well, thank you, Jordan. Any questions, Commissioner? Again, compliment getting something 26 years off the books. Good job. Thank you. I move approval of this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Vote number four is approved. Vote number five is also with Jordan. Jesse, vote number five concerns a vote to accept and expend a grant from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources. This is to transform five vacant parcels in Boston's Mattapan and Dorchester neighborhoods into safe and productive compact urban farms and honeybee sanctuaries that will bring new urban agricultural uses to underserved populations of the city. The grant amount is $40,000. Jordan, if you'd present your vote request. Yep, um, DND is seeking approval for an accept and expend vote uh, for a $40,000 grant awarded to us from the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources, as you stated. Um, we applied in October 2016. Um, and received the grant, and so now we're just looking to get going on the project. Uh, Jordan, as a, as a condition of the grant, does it require a city match from the state, or is it just that we're giving them more money because we know the project cost would be higher? No, there's no match requirement. Okay, because it's going to be a $90,000 total project cost, probably? Uh, the MDAR grant is for 40000 and we currently have RFPs out for these parcels. Okay. Um, five separate RFPs that have $10,000 in grassroots funding um, assigned with them. Okay. So 90 in total, yeah. Yep. And the grassroots funding is our, uh, a piece of our CDBG federal money that we get every year. So we, we put out a small portion of the CDBG for grassroots and urban farming. Great, thank you for gardens. the clarification. No question, always great to accept money. It is great. Um, uh, I move that we approve this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Vote number five is approved. <coughs> Vote number six, it was with John Fuerbach. John is a senior development officer with the Neighborhood Housing Development Division of the Department of Neighborhood Development. This vote request concerns an acceptance of a deed from the Boston Redevelopment Authority doing business as the Boston Planning and Development Agency, the BPDA, to the City of Boston. This vote request concerns various parcels identified in the vote, which are located in Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. The purchase price is $1. John, if you would present the vote request. Thank you, Angela. Uh, good morning. Um, before I go forward, I just want to recognize William Epperson. He's the Senior Development Officer at Real Estate Management and Sales Division within the department. He's taken the lead on this, but he's unavailable for this vote. I've worked with him, so I, okay. I feel confident that I could do this. Um, on behalf of DND, I'm here requesting that PFC accept a deed from the Boston Redevelopment Authority for 16 parcels totaling approximately uh, 68,000 square feet uh, in the Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan neighborhoods. Um, 
the parcels are being transferred to D&D for disposition and development as housing as we outlined in, in the vote package. Uh, in a nutshell, for probably the last year, maybe a little bit longer, D&D has been working with the BPDA to try to identify uh, areas where D&D has had a very strong planning and community process influence um, where there's BPDA parcels. So this is uh, an effort to uh, transfer parcels over to D&D where we, we've got outreach with neighborhood groups and, and so, so forth. Um, we would uh, weave these parcels into our current planning and disposition processes. Um, all the parcels are zoned residential and they either abut a D and D property or as I mentioned, they're located in neighborhoods where D and D is working right now. If PFC approves the vote, uh, we would seek a surplus vote from the city council followed by community process. Uh, we'd include all of the parcels in specific community processes to determine what would be the best use for the parcels. Um, the vote package includes a memo that gets a little bit more to, to, the, to the vote requests. Um, the vote <coughs> request also includes handouts. Uh, they got a map of, of all the parcels, which includes a photo of the parcel, um, the warden parcel, as well, well as the total square foot for each of the parcels. I'm here for any questions if you have them. Thank you, John. Any questions, Commissioner? Um, I would move that we approve Second. this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank Great. you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Vote number six is approved. Vote number seven is with Christopher Rooney. Chris is a project manager with the Real Estate Management and Sales Division of the Department of Neighborhood Development. This vote request concerns a conveyance to the Blue Hill Missionary Baptist Church Incorporated. It's vacant land located at 1260 Blue Hill Avenue in Mattapan, Massachusetts. The purchase price is $17,000. Chris, if you would present your vote request. Good morning, commissioners. On behalf of the Department of Neighborhood Development, I'm requesting PFC approval for the conveyance of 1260 Blue Hill Avenue in Mattapan to Blue Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Inc., as outlined in the vote package. D&D conducted a public process that resulted in this vote request. A community notification letter was sent on November 19th, 2013. A request for proposals was issued on June 23rd, 2014, with a due date of July 31st, 2014. The RFP was advertised in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Central Register on June 25th, 2014, and the Boston Herald on June 23rd and June 30th of 2014. The tentative designation was published in the city record on October 27th, 2014, and November 3rd, 2014. Two proposals were submitted in response to the RFP, and one was determined to meet eligibility criteria. On October 1st, 2014, the PFC approved the tentative designation of Blue Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Inc., and on September 17th, 2015, the PFC approved an extension of the tentative de developer designation. The vote package contains a comprehensive memo about the project. A handout has also been provided. The first is a site map showing the location of the parcel on Blue Hill Avenue, uh, roughly mid-block between Hosmer and Clockwood Streets. The second slide is an image of the property and the church building at 1258 Blue Hill Avenue is located on the left-hand side. It's the white building on the left. And the third slide is a copy of their site plan for the parking lot. Um, and this uh, site plan follows all the development guidelines that were prov provided in the RFP and those uh, development guidelines were developed by our Assistant Director of uh, Design and Construction, Jay Lee, uh, and they met all of our uh, requests uh, for fencing, uh, landscaping, et cetera. In summary, the PFC approves the vote request. Uh, it will result in the following public benefits. The project will improve one parcel of vacant land in the neighborhood. The project is expected to create at least 268 construction hours, which will generate jobs among building trades. The sale of this parcel can also be expected to yield long-term financial benefits for the city. By removing these parcels from our inventory, the city will be able to avoid future costs and liabilities associated with maintaining these properties. In addition, by returning this property to the tax roll, the city can expect to recoup approximately $431 in annual tax revenue. And I can answer any questions if any. Thank you, Chris. Any questions? No questions. I, I concur with Commissioner Mamoli's uh, earlier comment that it's great to sell something to somebody who's already using it for parking and get something for it, so. Yes, they've, they've done a tremendous job of maintaining that site for the last 30 years. It's pretty amazing. We're really happy to be able to sell it to them. Thank you very much. Um, I would move approval of this. 
Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Vote number seven is approved. <coughs> we now have vote number eight. Vote number eight is with Thomas McKay. He's a housing development officer for the Neighborhood Housing Development Division of the Department of Neighborhood Development. The vote request concerns a conveyance to CFHM Properties, LLC. This is vacant land located at 15 Calendar Street, 17 Calendar Street, 21 to 23 Calendar Street, 25 to 27 Calendar Street, 29 Calendar Street, 10 to 12 Tucker Street, 14 Tucker Street. The properties are located in Dorchester. The purchase price is $700. Thomas, if you'd present your vote. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, on behalf of the Department of Neighborhood Development, I'm here requesting PFC approval uh, for the conveyance to CFHM Properties, LLC, uh, for the seven uh, parcels included here, located at 15 Calendar Street, 17 Calendar Street, 21 to 23 Calendar Street, 25 Calendar Street, 27 to 29 Calendar Street, 10 to 12 Tucker Street, and 14 Tucker Street, uh, as outlined in the vote package. Uh, DND uh, has conducted an extensive public process that's revolt resulted in this vote request. A community meeting was held on March 15th of 2016 uh, to discuss the inclusion of these seven parcels in the release of an RFP for development. A uh, request for proposals was issued on June 20th of 2016 and was due on July 29th of 2016. The RFP was advertised in the State Central Register on June 22nd of 2016 and the Boston Herald on June 20th and June 27th of 2016. Uh, two development teams applied and responded to the RFP and both were determined to meet eligibility criteria. Uh, the preferred developer was invited to a community meeting on October 3rd of 2016 uh, to prevent, present their proposal for the sites. On October 5th of 2016, PFC approved the tentative developer designation of CFHM Properties, LLC. Uh, following this vote, the land designation and intent to sell was advertised in the city record on November 7th and November 14th of 2016. Uh, the vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFC vote request. I've also provided a few handouts. Um, the, the first handout shows the seven highlighted parcels um, on, uh, the top is on Calendar Street and the bottom two are on Tucker Street. Uh, the second shows a site plan of the three two family homes that will be on Calendar Street and the two uh, images below show renderings of what those homes will look like once they're placed on, on the site. Um, the third, ha uh, third handout is a close-up. Uh, these are the two uh, models of the two family homes that will be used on Calendar Street. Um, the next handout is a site plan showing the home on Tucker Street as well as an architectural rendering of the two family home uh, that, will, that will be on the site. Um, if PFC approves the vote request, uh, it will result in the following public benefits. Uh, the creation of four new affordable two-family home ownership sales uh, result in a total creation of eight new housing units. Um, two of these sales are going to be sold to uh, income qualified first home first-time home buyers at 80 percent of the area median income and the other two will be sold to income qualified first-time home buyers at hundred percent of the area median income. Uh, there's one rental unit in each of the two family homes, um, which are also, uh, there, two of those will be at 80% and two will be at 100% AMI. Um, so it's revitalizing seven parcels of currently vacant um, city-owned land. And by removing these parcels from city inventory, it will allow the city to avoid future uh, costs and liabilities associated with the parcels and will save the city an estimated $3,698 each year in operational and maintenance costs. And by returning these to the tax rolls, uh, we'll recoup the city an additional $19,945 in uh, first year tax revenue. I'm here to answer any questions about this if the commissioners have further questions. Thank you, Tom. Um, any uh, questions? More compliment, less than a year, getting it from RFP to an award. I think that's great work.
I think one of the reasons these are moving quickly is the, the designs are very contextual for the neighborhood and the community process on these new developments has, throughout the city has been very, very positive. They like the fact that they're affordable to more middle income homeowners and they like the fact that we're really studying the streets before we do the designs and work with the, the, the selected developer on the designs. People feel like they're being respected in the, and we're really looking at their, the homes that are surrounding them and making sure that the, the new homes fit in. So it, these have been really strong, good community processes. Great. Um, any further questions, Commissioner? I would move approval of this. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Vote number eight is approved. The last vote before the commission is vote number nine. This is with David West. David is a housing development officer with the Neighborhood Housing Development Division. The vote request concerns an amendment to the vote of May 6, 2015 to extend the tentative designation and intent to sell period from 24 to 36 months to the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation. This concerns vacant land located at 9 through 11 Bromley Street, 13 through 17 Bromley Street, 19 Bromley Street, 21 Bromley Street, 58 New Heath Street, 60 New Heath Street, 62 New Heath Street, 894 to 900 Parker Street, and 908 Parker Street. There's also an undisclosed number on New Heath Street as well. These properties are located in Jamaica Plain. This is a time extension. Noted on the agenda, there was a first vote for attentive designation request which was on May 6, 2015. That concerned a 12-month period going through May 6 of 2016. There's a second amendment for attentive designation for an additional 12 months to run from May 6 of 2016 through May 6 of 2017, which would bring that to 24 months. There's a third request, which is the present request today. That's to provide an additional 12 months to have the tentative designation period run from May 6, 2017 through May 6 of 2018. That would be a total of 36 months if the vote is approved. David, if you would present your vote request for a time extension. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Neighborhood Development, I'm here requesting PFC approval for an extension of tentative developer designation of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation for parcels as outlined in the vote package. The land will be utilized by JPNDC to develop an affordable 47 unit project known as General Heath Square. We are requesting a further extension at this time as the developer is awaiting a state decision on their application for funds essential to the project moving forward. D&D staff and the developer are confident that the project will be awarded state funding in this round, which is expected to be announced within the next two to four months. The vote package includes a comprehensive memo about the project and the PFD vote request. Uh, I provided two handouts. That is, the first handout is a site map that the site map, the yellow area, includes 10 city-owned parcels. The second is a rendering of the two perspectives of, the, uh, of what the project will look like when completed. In summary, if PFC approves the vote request, it will result in the following public benefits. 47 total housing units, total rental housing units, and it should be noted that all 47 will be affordable, seven at 80% of area median income, 24 at 60% of area median income, and 16 at 30% area media, median income, which is very high percentage of low income units. All the units will be deed restricted and remain affordable in perpetuity. The project will revitalize 10 parcels of uh, very underutilized vacant land in the neighborhood. It's been vacant for over 30 years. The project is expected to create over 61,000 construction hours, generating uh, numerous jobs among the building trades. 
Any questions? Any questions, David? Thank you. Um, no Commissioner, questions. any? No questions. Um, I would move approval of this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief. Thank you. Vote number nine is approved, and I just make a clarification for the record that the agenda does reflect that the vote of this commission, that there was a meeting held on May 6 of 2015, and thereafter there was an amendment vote, which was approved on July 20 of 2016. Thank you. Commissioners, if there's no further questions, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Um, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.